In this problem, we're going to find the principal unit normal vector at pi over 6 given this vector valued function. So let's go ahead and work through this very carefully. So the formula for the principal unit normal vector is the following. So it's equal to the derivative of the unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent vector. So this means that we also need to know the formula for the unit tangent vector. So the unit tangent vector is equal to the derivative of r divided by the magnitude of the derivative of r. So we first have to come up with this, then differentiate it, then we can plug in the numbers. So we have to find the derivative of this before we can plug in the pi over 6. Okay, so let's work through it very carefully. This is not a hard problem, I think, because the derivatives are easy, but it's important to go slow when you're working through these problems. So r prime of t. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this will be negative pi sine t i hat. And the derivative of sine is cosine. So this will be plus pi cosine t j hat. All right, that's our derivative. And now we need the magnitude of this. So the magnitude of r prime of t is equal to the square root. And then you just square each of the components. So it'll be negative pi sine of t squared plus pi cosine of t squared. You can write this as square root pi squared sine squared t plus pi squared cosine squared t. Then we can pull out the pi squared. So we have the square root of pi squared times the square root of sine squared t plus cosine squared t. So that's equal to the square root of pi squared times the square root of 1. And that's an identity. It's equal to 1. Square root of pi squared is pi. Square root of 1 is 1. So we just get pi. So the magnitude of r prime of t is equal to pi. OK, so now we can form the unit tangent vector. So the unit tangent vector is basically going to be this guy divided by pi. So t of t, I'm going to go to component form. I'm going to write this like this. I just, I feel like things are cleaner in component form. So I just feel like I, easier to think. So now we're just dividing each of these by pi. You see how it feels easier? <laughs> um, so this is going to be negative sine of t and then cosine of t. Beautiful. So that's not the answer, uh, but we're getting there, right? That's the um, unit tangent vector. Now we need the derivative of this thing. So the derivative of the unit tangent vector. So the derivative of sine is cosine. So this will be negative cosine t. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this is negative sine t. At this point, we can plug in pi over 6, or we can find the magnitude. Let's just go ahead and find the magnitude. You'll see that the magnitude is just going to be 1. Um, so this is going to be the square root of negative cosine t squared plus negative sine t squared. So that's just going to be cosine squared plus sine squared. So it's just going to be 1. So you're just going to get 1. So it's 1. So now we can finally write down the principal unit normal vector. So it's basically this thing divided by 1. So it's just that thing. 
Okay, because you're dividing by one, so nothing really nothing really happens. And we can finally plug in pi over six. So plugging in pi over six. So it's not hard, it's just there's a lot of steps, right? Because you have to use this formula, then you have to use this formula. So it just it just takes time. It's really beneficial just to go step by step. Um, it'll be negative cosine of pi over 6, and then um, negative sine of pi over 6. This is equal to negative. So if you don't memorize these, it's okay. The way I do it is I memorize the sine of pi over 3 as the square root of 3 over 2. I memorize this one. And then because I know that, then I know the sine of pi over 6 must be 1 half. It must be the other one. And so the cosine of pi over 6, well, it can't be 1 half, so it must be the square root of 3 over 2. So this one will be square root of 3 over 2. And then this one will be 1 half. And that's it. That is finally the final answer. So really nice problem because um, you know it's not too difficult and uh, it's just a good question. So I hope this video uh, has been helpful to anyone out there who is learning some Calculus 3. Good luck and take care.